Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf back here at Second Swing Minnetonka with Kevin Kraft. He is returning to Minnesota, the great state, very cold state of Minnesota, right? Much um, better weather circumstances yes, this time. Yes, we're not under Much a better. winter storm warning this time. No. Uh, but today, a lot of you have asked uh, in the first few series of videos that we did with Kevin, testing some of the new products for 2023, a lot of you asked about the clubs he's playing. And so today, Kind of doing a makeshift what's in the bag because we don't have his exact clubs with us, but obviously Kevin knows his specs and we have some visual aids here to kind of help with it. So, uh, Kevin, I know you kind of called your, your off air, or off air, you kind of called your bag almost Frankenstein ish. And so, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's not exactly easy to find everything in the store. No, here. it's it's getting more interesting as, <laughs> as time goes by and, uh, and things morph a little bit. Uh, I got a number of holdovers from last season, but there's there's a good yeah. bit of, of the new stuff in here too. Yeah, so let's let's start at the top. If any of you watched the driver videos testing new product for 2023, specifically the Aerojet drivers, you saw some pretty good performance that Kevin delivered on TrackMan. And so it's not a surprise to see the Aerojet head here. Yeah, at, no, in it's, your bag. it's not. Um, you know, full truth be told, I'm, I am a Cobra staffer. Uh, I'm, this will be my eighth year with Cobra. So um, it's not surprising at all to see something Cobra in my yeah. bag. Um, but, you know, I'm a tournament player. I want the best performance I can get out of yeah. whatever I'm using. And uh, as I'm getting older, I'm still chasing speed, as seems to be the the kind of the MO yeah. for most people these days. Right. And, uh, and I actually hit 170 miles an hour of ball speed one time. Yeah, We're well, you still did working it. on yeah. making it happen more often than once, <laughs> but one time. So uh, this was the this was the the one that did it for me. Yeah, just the standard Aerojet head, uh, nine degree, mm -hmm. standard draw settings. Uh, I'm like everybody else. I need help getting that thing squared up. And right. I, I want that. I want that ball to turn a little bit for me. Um, and then I've got a different shaft in here. Yeah, I was, um, you, you hinted at some things to me about the shaft. So talk yeah, to me about so that. Yeah, so this one, this one's a little different. Um, I like to tinker. <clears throat> I have access to all this stuff. So that's, you know, <clears throat> makes things easy and it makes things difficult because I have all these options and I like to try them. I need to know how they feel, you know, what kind of performance I'm supposed to be getting from these things so that I can pass that along to my clients. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I was working with the Autoflex shaft the one that looks like a, a roll of lifesavers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, love that coloration. <laughs> I would though. And uh, I posted on on Instagram that this might be coming to my bag. Yeah. And a friend of mine who's been in the industry for a, a long time uh, reached out to me immediately and said, "Dude, you gotta try the Brava shaft." Okay. So first of all, I have no idea what that is. Yeah. So I had to go look it up. And so. BGT, the company that makes the stability putter shafts, has gotten into some other shafts. They now do wedge shafts, which I have not tried yet. And then this new Brava shaft. Mm -hmm. um, it's very lightweight. It's only 56 grams. Um, composition, the way this shaft is built, it is designed for s incredible stability, uh, which they are claiming uh, helps you hit it in the center of the club face more. So kind of seems to be playing out fairly well for me. Yeah. Like dispersion on a club head seems to be very consistent. Ball speed seem to be really, really good. Spin numbers are great. It's lightweight. I can swing it fast. Yeah. Guess what? I'm going to roll with it. You're going to roll with it. I'm yeah. Roll with and that's, and that's the thing about you being a tinker is you can test all these things. And yeah. if you see something like that, that's the best performer. It's going to go right into the bag. Yeah. So, uh, that's, you know, fascinating to see all that come to fruition that, you know, even in this sense, we didn't even have it at the time in the store. No, and, and it, you know, it, it just kind of yeah. came down like that. And, you know, he, my friend just called him up and they sent one to me and I tipped it up and spent a little tiny bit of time with it and wasn't really sure. I was still working with a couple other shafts and, and I said, all right, let's, let's give this thing sure. the, the full Monty, right? Let's right. really put it through the paces. And I was like, Okay, this thing's really good. Yeah, right, right. So, and you yeah. don't see a lot of 56 gram X Flex. No, you don't. Out you don't. There. Um, I think we're going to see more of it now, though. Uh, you know, the chase I, for speed. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, not always does lighter weight mean we're going to swing it faster. There's yeah. a lot of times where something heavier people will actually swing it faster. But um, for this guy and for a number of other people, we're going to see that lighter weight 
can help them mm-hmm. move it faster. Sure. And so I think we're going to see more of that with the shafts as we're going forward, as the technologies continue to evolve. Shaft tech is is evolving every bit as fast or faster than head tech. So mm-hmm. um, you know, we're, it's it's an exciting time in the in the shaft world for sure. Sure, absolutely. So moving down into the mm-hmm. three wood here, I see Callaway triple diamond and so this is actually 15 degree head but you have said it is you go stronger and loft yeah i'm actually i've got i have the 13 five head the three plus head cranked down to 11 and a half wow now this is a very specific scenario yeah okay i think it's fairly well documented at this point that i have the yips with the driver there are holes that i literally my brain will not allow me to pull the driver out of the bag um those holes typically are water tight down the right side, out of balance tight down the right mm-hmm. side. I've got my game fairly well geared to try to keep the driver from going left. I want it to turn over, but I don't want it to go left. So because my brain is essentially mush when I get up to a hole like <laughs> that, um, I have a three wood that's now geared to be a driver replacement. So yeah. at 11 and a half degrees, um, I've got it set on the draw setting. And it's honestly, I can hit it 280, 285. Yeah. So I give up a little bit. Sure. But I can hit it. Yeah. Right. I mean, rather than just standing up there and having a full blown panic attack, I can actually pull out <laughs> right. a golf club and swing at it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. That seems to be the, I mean, ultimately, you need to go up there and have confidence that you need yes. to hit the shot. And yeah. so I think yeah. that's something I know our fitters harp on all the time is you got to look down at the club and know you can pull the trigger confidently swing yeah. at it. And so if you can't do that with the driver in that instance, this, I mean, and you, I imagine you did some testing here and found that the triple diamond head just gave you the ball speed that you kind of wanted to closely had, match the driver. Had to go triple diamond to get the, the lower loft. Mm-hmm. So that was, sure, that sure, one, sure, was, there, the stronger, there wasn't, there wasn't much choosing yeah. on that op- on that one. Um, but the head's great. Uh, it looks fantastic. Um, it, it does make, you know, if, I've, if I'm trying to attack a par five with a fairway wood, does make that a little bit more challenging. Mm-hmm. I mean, trying to hit 11 and a half degrees right. off the deck, you're just not going to create a ton of trajectory. Right. So um, I have to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. If I've got space to run something up, okay, I might be yeah. in pretty good shape. That's sort of the sacrifice way. you're making by having yeah. a, it's, it's another just way driver, more, essentially. Yeah, it's just way more important for me off the tee. Right, right. You know? Yeah, so. you kind of see more value in that, which yes. makes total sense. Yeah. Um, hybrids now. Cobra, okay. King, Tech, uh, you have two of these in the bag? I do. I carry the two and the four. Okay. Um, so gapping wise, and I know we're going to do a video on gapping here coming yes. up. Stay tuned for that on the channel. But gapping wise and kind of, I mean, ultimately, what made you decide this model and then the two and the four? So this one's got all the all the tinker ability. <laughs> I, I love to be able to adjust things. So we have three weights in the back. Uh, you can weight it for toe if, if you're somebody that turns hybrids over too much. We can put it in the heel if you're hanging it out to the right. Very stable with the heavy weights, toe and heel. And then we've got all the loft adjustability. So being able to dial these things in, obviously, look, I'm carrying an 11 and a half degree fairway wood. Yeah. Uh, that could potentially cause some gapping issues. So my two hybrids crank down to 16 de- uh, degrees. Mm-hmm. And so my, my normal carry if I hit it off the deck with this is about 245. Okay. Uh, carry on this is around 230, 235. Okay. So I'm, it, it pushes up closely Close enough, enough yeah. That, it, yeah. that I don't have that massive sure. gap in there. Um, I tend to spin hybrids a little bit more than anything else for whatever reason. I'm not a big spinner with, with irons or anything, but I've had trouble sometimes gapping hybrids because I, I get too much spin and they do too much the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, a three and a four isn't going to spread it out enough for me. Right. So okay. uh, my four hybrids set at uh, standard loft draw. This one's set at 16 degrees. Okay. Okay. So Interesting. So I mean, that puts you at 16. Is it 21 on the four? 22? 21. 21. Yep. Okay. 21 on the four. Yep. So which, again, is, you know, you kind of have that 11 and a half, 16, you know, 20. I mean, that's, you're kind of bridging that gap pretty equally throughout. Yeah. On those. And I get two, 215-ish carry out of the four hybrid. Yeah. So, you know, Choke it down a little on the two if I have to, or swing right. really hard on the on the four right. if I have to. I'm not afraid right. to do that either. So yeah, uh, both with the the stock MMT okay. 80 hybrid shafts. Okay, you went stock with that one. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I I do tend to go into the the uh, aftermarket stuff, but it's all feel thing. Yeah, right. So uh, 
Whereas when we get into the irons, I play an X flex shaft in the irons. I play stiff in the woods. Yeah. Kind of opposite the way a lot of my fittings would go. Might go, you know, a little softer in the irons and a little, little uh, stronger in the woods, just to for numbers standpoint yeah. or from or from a feel standpoint. But I don't like a boardy shaft in the woods, and I like to be able to feel it load and unload. Irons, I just want to. don't. I don't, I don't need like to feel anything. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's fine. So. Sure. Um, speaking of the irons, yep. so I see the, the Cobra King tour here, but I know you also mentioned the potential utility iron also going in the bag. So There's, talk to me about yeah, kind of the this decision is where there. Early, and, this is where yeah. Frankenstein really comes out. <laughs> um, I'm messing a little bit. I had I struggled a little bit with, with five iron at finals of Q school. Well, yeah. first stage and finals of Q school. I found myself catching shots a little bit thin. So I was losing ball speed. Yeah. I was getting a little too much spin coming up short, leaving myself difficulties. Mm. So... Um, I've got the King Tour irons in. They look fantastic. They feel fantastic. Results in the fitting bay has been really, really good. Very positive. Um, but they do spin a little bit less than the MIM Tours did, which I played the last two yeah. years. So um, I got a little lead tape down there trying to get just a little more height. Sure. And we had, I happened to be walking by our, our pre-owned Cobra section the yeah, other yeah. day. And there was a, uh, a King UT five in yeah. there so it's a little bit bigger head and it had a, a ventus velicor blue 10x in it yeah. i thought oh well you know that makes sense so i started hitting this thing right as i'm bound to do and uh numbers were really good yeah. i hit it about 10 feet higher with probably another three or four hundred rpm of spin extra ball speed because of the composition of the head yep. and guess what i don't lose anything and i gain the distance I gain, is probably pretty similar distance is yep. basically identical yeah. and i get a little bit better control so okay so that's kind um, of a new for your five iron now it's essentially yeah yeah of i haven't had it on a golf course so. yet so okay. it's it's to be determined sure but sure. there's a distinct possibility that okay. this may actually stay in okay there. okay yeah. so the so the king utility five iron and then the cobra king tours Six down six to, to wedges, pitch. essentially? Yep, six okay. to pitch, yep. Okay, yep. okay. And then uh, we also have here steel fiber shaft. So yes. talk to us about that. And because uh, we've done, I think a few years ago, we did um, some steel fiber kind of testing and, and uh, mm -hmm. a fitting actually for kind of what that feels like for maybe yep. a player that does have, um, could be injuries or could be yep. a, you know a feel thing, right? Yep. So talk to me about what kind of the benefits of this. So... For me, this was a little bit lighter weight at 110 grams, which which I like. I didn't want to go lightweight, but I didn't want to stay in the 120 category really either. Um, I've got arthritis in specifically this knuckle from years and years and years right, of sure. that of that compression. So you know, the first 10 balls I hit this morning warming up, you didn't see me going, ah, you know, but <laughs> it, it hurts. So the graphite does help. Uh, mm. Take some of that vibration out. I got tendonitis in both my wrists from hitting off mats for uh, as many years as I have sure. growing up in the north. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the way it goes in the north. So steel fiber gave me that really solid iron shaft performance. Yeah. Um, but with some... With a little bit kind of help. A softer in terms feel. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I, at the time, there. I was a really high launch... Uh, high launch guy. He used yeah. to hit the ball really, really high. Well, I've kind of changed everything now. My numbers are still good, but they've they've morphed a little bit. So um, there's going to come a time where I'll be a, an I-95 guy. I'm just not quite there yet. And Well, soon, right? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope I can keep I'm this going you. for I'm a while. You. I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. I've, I watched you Hit you know 168 I think in here was what your what your set at your high at so when you were in here. So close. Yeah. Um, you almost got to 170. Yeah. So um, wedges. Yeah. So Callaway jaws. The straight line on this uh, on the leading edge. I just immediately caught mm -hmm. my eye. A little killed leading edge. Uh, I love that little into the turf bit there. Yep. Um, the feel a little softer. I I just I yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with these like yeah. instantly. So loft wise, what do you have in there then with the three? Forty eight, fifty four, sixty. Okay. Okay. So um, my mims were jacked up a little bit, yeah, uh, a little stronger, and then the the King Tours came standard yeah. that way. So I didn't have to really do any tweaking there, there which was nice. And the numbers really with the King Tours were exactly what my mims were. Okay. So there's been no no issues gotcha. there. Gotcha. Gotcha. But yeah, I've I love these. They feel great. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Just awesome. Simple. I mean, and yeah. then that, that raw feel too, like it has to be yeah. a little bit different than Look, feel, the sound. Plated. Yep. The, uh, if I, if I, if I was really picky, I would say I would love that the raw finish stopped here. Like the Taylor made. Oh do. yeah. Um, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. It is not a deal yeah. breaker. Uh, I like the fact that it's not very glary. So that's sure. good, but yeah. Um, you know, I'm aesthetics. Right. Aesthetics. Me and aesthetics. It's terrible. So, and then we have to wrap up with putter, which might be the most fun discussion, given what I know about your putter situation. Yeah. Uh, so I'm holding Ping PLD yep. Primetime 4. Yep. Um, I think, is this, so this is currently in the bag? It's, or it will be? It's, it's migrating okay. toward the bag. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a rotating wheel of flat sticks in my bag and it's terrible i i've been accused and i will cop to the fact that i change putters almost as often as i change underwear <laughs> not quite but it's it's <laughs> it's in the neighborhood right so yeah i've been messing around um just trying to figure it out yeah. my my the worst part of my game right now is putting and, and it has been for a while i'm streaky i know i'm streaky I'm going to go on a run one of these days where I'm going to make a whole lot of putts for a while. Yeah. Um, I made a whole lot of putts one round at finals of Q school and that didn't do me a whole lot of good. <laughs> so, cause the other three days were dead. Yeah. Like dead. Could Nothing. not buy it. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I've got a number of things that I'm working with. I've got a number of things that I'm probably going to order. Um, yeah, there, there's this, <laughs> My wants are, are, are strong. There's good yeah. new things coming out. Um, but yeah, this one, this one fits my eye. I like it's a little more compact, um, great sight line, anything I can do to just try to see if I can figure out where that yeah. stupid line is. And then yeah. it's just a matter of getting the right speed. Right. It's just right line and right yeah. speed. How hard can it be? Isn't it? When you, when you say it like that, it's so simple. It's so simple. Uh, well, golf and well, golf itself is simple. It's just not easy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I have know a little bit about kind of what the, the putter struggles. Uh, yeah. I know I have my own kind of weird mental uh, approach to the putter, but yeah. um, that was kind of cool to look into the bag a little bit of Kevin Kraft, the tinkerer, kind of a, uh, I'm maybe on the far end spectrum of a tinkerer. Really likes to mess around and test some things. But the thing about this is we probably options. could do another update in like, I don't know, a few months and they might be different. So. We could um, do it next week and the putter <laughs> would probably be different. So. The putter I choose on any given day is the putter that I hate the least. I mean, that's I like it. That's basically how it goes Some right now. Textbook advice for the viewers. Yes. If they're definitely. wondering what clubs to buy, play. a lot of putters <laughs> and just keep rotating until something works. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. So, golfers, uh, thank you for watching. Great stuff from Mr. Kevin Kraft. And also stay tuned for more videos with Kevin here in the future. But otherwise, tell us in the comments what you think of Kevin's bag. And uh, maybe you have some words of advice uh, for Kevin. But uh, let us know. Kevin, thanks for uh, telling us everything today. Absolutely. Thanks for putting this this little bit of craziness together. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not as easy as just being able to just pull them out of the bag. Right. But I don't like <laughs> shipping my stuff. I just don't. So.